We have been doing streaks, uh, five disorders of capitalism, and we are at the end of the fifth disorder. So, militarily, mili <laughs> militarily, the U.S. has now been either defeated or deadlocked in three major land wars since the 1970s. And will in future probably be more reluctant to intervene in local conflicts with boots on the ground. We'll see about that. New sophisticated means of violence are being deployed to reassure collaborate, collaborate, collaborating governments and inspire confidence in the U.S. as a global enforcer of oligarchic property rights and as a safe haven for oligarchic families and their treasures. They include the use of highly secretive special forces to seek out potential enemies for individualized destruction, unmanned aircraft capable of killing anybody at almost any place on the globe, confinement and torture of an unknown number of peoples in a worldwide system, secret prison systems, and comprehensive surveillance of potential opposition everywhere with the help of big data technology. Whether this will be, this will be enough to restore global order, especially in the light of China's rise as an effective economic and to a lesser extent military rival to the US may however be doubted. Okay, so So we looked at the basic uh, structure of global capitalism today last time. Global capitalism. And one of the key Uh, structural uh, characteristic of the system is the distinction between the distinction between Um, center and periphery. And as we saw last time, this uh, basic uh, structure or this basic distinction as is essential to capital accumulation and the level of maintaining the level of profits And obviously we saw that that periphery itself is diverse and they are different level based on how close or farther, how essential it is for the center. But this basic structure is essential for the global capitalism and for the capitalism in, in the center as well because it depends on, as far as it depends on the exploitation and extraction of resources from periphery uh, in different ways. Um, and one function of this is to support the client regimes. Client regimes support them milita militarily through giving them 
the best available um, ammunition and providing them military and technological and all those supports that's important for the global capitalism and the US as the proxy universal or semi-universal state of the capital or the global leader of the capitalist world has this basic function of supporting these client regime and keeping the this uh, d basic distinction between the center and periphery intact and in order to do that obviously at times um, the US need um, to intervene in different conf conflicts in order to help the client regimes or to crush the any uh, unwanted regimes or unwanted resistances which may or may not affect the global hegemony of capital or capitalism uh, negatively. So in crucial ways the, this uh, system Um, which is a system of huge, which is a system of oppression, unprecedented oppression, albeit oppression which is executed through proxies and client regimes and war warlords with occasional direct interventions is essential for the global hegemony of capitalism today and, and this system requires uh, willingness on the part of America to willingness on the part of America to intervene directly militarily to keep any emerging threats at bay or teach um, you know advanced lessons to anyone thinking of you know rising against the system um, but as Drake is saying America's this willingness is stunted by the fact that uh, America is wary of ground and direct intervention. Americans are not willing to die for this system. So that's why the increasingly it relies on air power which is not the most effective way to achieve the desired objective and now there's a great investment in technology say through drones and robots and other unmanned technologies so America can fight those wars From distance 
and it is to be seen how uh, this technological innovation how effective it would be because it might be effective in killing people but it might not be that effective in totally crushing uh, or totally defeating uh, the insurgencies against capital and especially it might not be useful uh, in any positive intervention in terms of state building and building institutions etc which are friendlier to the global capitalism etc so streak is um, not sure about whether this will work and you know this has to be seen how effective would be this uh, unmanned technologically led uh, um, fighting capability without you with the minimum use of actual direct uh, 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 boots on the ground so to speak and this is complicated by the situation that uh, there are various competitors uh, which are emerging especially China N not a military uh, competitor but at least economic comp competitor and Russia is there uh, and you have still a smaller player like Brazil India, Turkey, etc. emerging and uh, without a coherent uh, strategy might be hard to stop the world becoming multipolar uh, system of powers which is obviously against the interests of American-led capitalism so this has to be seen so one of the reason uh, street thinks that capitalism is declining because America's um, the decline of American will willingness to directly intervene and support capitalism and sacrifice for it so whether this will be enough to restore global order especially in the light of China's rise as an effective economic and to a lesser extent military military rival is to be seen uh, we missed this one anyway I'm not sure whether we did this Con contemporary capitalism increasingly suffer from global anarchy as the United States is no longer able to serve in its post-war post role and a multipolar world order is nowhere on the horizon in a diff different multi different potential competitors are emerging but there's no single power which can match America's power but America doesn't play its role consistently as a as the defender and propagator of the global capitalism because of many reasons and one of the reasons we discussed last time was uh, this contradiction between its role as a uh, its role as the nation, na its role as the nation states. So one of the reason America cannot consistently play this role um, uh, 
as the so defender and the state of global capital the global universal state of the of the universal or global capital is because its basic political legitimacy comes is based on its status as a nation state so its national interests always trump the interest of the global capital and the system which um, it has built since 90s that a neoliberal global capital is basically <clears throat> Uh, technicalized, uh, technicalized version of the Americanization of global institutions. So all the global institution they depend on America and mostly manned by Americans and women <laughs> by Americans and basically look after the American interests and only second, second, secondarily look after the interests of the global capital. So because of these con contradictions and because of its unwillingness to sacrifice for the global capital, um, uh, there is global anarchy. That is, there are different players emerging. Uh, <clears throat> the China is playing its own game in Africa, for example, and the USSR is playing its own game in the Uh, Eastern Europe and in the Middle East and mainly in the countries of the old Soviet Union um, and there are new players emerging and America is unwilling to consistently support the interests of global uh, capitalism against these players. Um, and its main, its main concern is uh, to safeguard its own interests rather than the interests of the uh, global ca capital. And one of the signs of that is it's unwillingness to to consider I mean obviously Euro can't do anything about Euro but global otherwise it, it, it's hell bent on making sure that no other cur uh, global currency emerges which can compete with or which can rival dollar because <clears throat> most of the global trade is in dollars and people around the world keep their savings in dollars and client states keep their money in dollars in America or elsewhere um, And it has the direct uh, it has the direct benefit to America, huge benefit. 
one example is just if, if the value of dollar is appreciated 10%. <clears throat> That's tantamount to saying the whole world is paying 10% tax to America without getting any benefits in uh, or recognition in uh, for a recognition for it. Um, so America doesn't want to let any other currency emerge, even if this is in the interest of. I'm just saying, giving an hypothetical example, it, if, even if it is in the interest of the global capital. So, so contem contemporary uh, capitalism increasingly suffer from global anarchy, as the United States is no longer able to serve in its post-war role, and a multipolar world order is nowhere to be uh, found in the horizon. Uh, while there are still you know, great you know, power clashes, the dollar's function as an international reserve currency is contested and cannot be otherwise given the declining performance of the American economy. Its rising levels of public and private debt and the recent experience um, several highly destructive financial crises. But America doesn't want uh, this to happen. Because the search for an international alternative, perhaps in the form of a uh, currency basket, is getting nowhere since the U.S. cannot afford to give up the privilege of indebting itself in its own currency. Moreover, stabilizing measures taken by international organizations at Washington Bears have increasingly tended to have destabil destabilizing effect on the periphery of the system as in the case of inflationary bubbles caused in countries like Brazil and Turkey by quantitative easing in the center. And then uh, we looked at the military part already, whether this is enough to restore global order, especially in the light of China's rise and effective economic uh, and to, le to a lesser extent military rival to the U.S. may however be doubted. Whether this will be enough, that is, a war fought mainly or primarily through technological means. Whether this will be enough to restore global order, especially in the light of China's rise as an effective economic and to a lesser extent military rival to the U.S. may, however, be doubted. Okay, now here is the summary of all the five things we did. In summary, capitalism as a social order held together by the promise of boundless collective progress is in critic, critical condition. Because a lot of people, I mean, for, for one simple reason, that a lot of people are outside this progress and are bound to remain in the outside this progress because of this need of capitalism to have this basic distinction between center and periphery. So there's always a lot of people... Um, collecting the benefit of this, lots of people, millions and millions of people benefit of this progress, but there are also billions of people who are left behind and sacrificing for this, that progress. Growth is giving way to sec secular stagnation. You know, uh, stagnation, it's the hallmark of, as we saw, of the mature capitalism. And the, that's why it needs the distinction between a uh, structural um, distinction between uh, center and periphery in the first place. We looked at it in the earlier videos. What economic progress remains is less and less shared within the center as well as more starkly within the center and between the center and periphery and, conf and within the periphery itself. And confidence in the capital Capitalist money econo economy is leverage on a rising mountain of promises that are ever less likely to be kept. So it's a pro <laughs> as Ken said, uh, I, I don't know whether he said it, it, uh, it or not. It is actually contested whether it is his quote, but whoever said it, it is actually true that in the long run we are all dead. Uh, this promise uh, of progress in the long run uh, doesn't mean anything to most people in this world. Since the 1970s, the capitalist center has undergone three successive crises of inflation, public finances, and private debt. Today, in an 
uneasy phase of transition, its survival depends on, on central banks providing it with unlimited synthetic liquidity, pumping in money. Step-by-step -step capitalism, shotgun marriage with democ democracy since 1945 is breaking up. On the three frontiers of commodification, labor, nature, and money, regulatory institutions restraining the advance of capitalism for its own good have collapsed. So it's an ir irrational system which always requires external constraint. And as it grows stronger and those constraints become weak, the system implodes from within. So it's, it's, it's weakening not because of any threat or any alternative. It's, it's weakening and collapsing or imploding if it is, uh, mainly because it is an irrational system. <laughs> it's irrational. There's nothing more irrational than accumulation for the sake of accumulation and building the whole so-called civilization around this idea. So regular, um, on the three fronts of com commodification, labor, nature, and money, regular, regulatory institutions re restraining the advance of capitalism for its own good have collapsed. And after the, um, so basically, uh, welfare system or state, a version of uh, mixed economies have collapsed. Uh, restraining the advances of capitalism for its own good have collapsed. And after the final victory of cap capitalism over its enemies, no political agency capable of rebuilding them is in sight. The capitalist system is at present stricken with at least five worsening disorders for which no cure is at hand. Declining growth. Which is inevitable when capitalism matures uh, because of the, uh, the rate of profits are going to decrease. Hence the need for this bifurcation between center and periphery. Declining growth, oligarchy, starvation of the public sphere, corruption and international anarchy. What is to be expected on the basis of capitalism, capitalism's recent historical record is a long and painful period of cumulative decay. Uh, so implosion. Because there is no alternative, there is no replacement, but it's dying. Of intensifying frictions, of fragility and uncertainty, and of a steady succession of uh, normal accident. Not necessarily, but quite possibly on the scale of the global breakdown of the 1930s. Okay, that's it, I think. I'll stop here.